<laughs> Thank my friend. Uh, this is the seven, 75th anniversary of the National Bible Week. And isn't it interesting that National Bible Week was claimed two weeks before World War II broke out and the nation really rallied and, and rallied behind uh, Franklin Roosevelt's call to pray together. The president that went on national radio on D-Day and led the nation in prayer. I'm sure if he were to try to do that today, if we were alive, then uh, people would be freaking out that the president was leading in prayer like that. But uh, uh, there are so many examples from World War II where we could say, wow, wasn't that a coincidence? The Germans ran out of gas at just the right time. This German general got, or commander got confused at just the time they were about to get enough gasoline to refill and refuel and keep the Battle of the Bulge going. So many little things. And a fellow in Iowa earlier this year had told me that coincidence is what we have when you don't notice God's at work. I'm still chewing on that, but... Um, in the first hundred years, about a hundred years after the founding, the U.S. Supreme Court had a case involving Trinity Church, and they went through and reviewed all the evidence and declared this is a Christian nation. It didn't mean everybody in, in America was a Christian at all. Nobody has to be. They have the freedom to say God doesn't exist. But the freedom that comes from a government based on biblical word is a freedom that cannot be obtained under any other uh, religious teaching. And that is why I, when I had a chance to meet retired General Jay Garner again um, back in September, I asked him again, he said, what happened? President George W. Bush sent him over into Iraq and asked him, uh, to find out what the Iraqi people felt like we should try to give them as a government. Now, I would say, let them choose their own government. We shouldn't be trying to push anything. But General Gardner, Garner did a brilliant job. But he went with some other people. One was a reporter, and he had people from the um, administration with him. And he was told, you've got to talk to this direct descendant of Muhammad and see what he says because people really listen to him being a direct descendant of Muhammad and he confirmed again that um, um, in a black turban also is an indication apparently of that from what we were told but uh, that he said look I'm going to tell you what I think we need here in Iraq and then I'll do that in my language and then I'll tell you in English since you're recording everything. Uh, and so he spoke for quite some time, and then he said, okay, in a nutshell, what I've said is basically we need a government that's composed of Iraqis and that it's based on a constitution that Iraqis put together, and that constitution is based on the teachings of Jesus. And General Gardner said when he got outside, he turned to the reporter and everybody did you guys all hear that? Did he really? They all said, yes. He said it should be based on the teachings of Jesus. And but when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. If you base a government on the teachings of anyone else, then ultimately there will not be true freedom in that nation. But God gives us that freedom. Um, this is a New Testament that belonged to my uncle, and it has, may the Lord be with you, and it has this brass plate here on the front, and people were encouraged to put it in their pocket, see if it saved, it apparently saved some lives right over the heart, but inside the fly leaf at the top, it says the White House, Washington. As Commander-in-Chief, I take pleasure in commending the reading of the Bible to all who serve in the armed forces of the United States. Throughout the centuries, men of many faiths and diverse origins have found in the sacred book, capitalized sacred book, 
words of wisdom, counsel, and inspiration. It is a fountain of strength, and now, as always, an aid in attaining the highest aspirations of the human soul in signed Franklin D. Roosevelt. And um, if you look back at our history, the very first book authorized to be published by the U.S. Congress at government expense was the Bible. You had the Supreme Court um, in the first 50 years saying, of course, the Bible should be taught. Uh, it's the best book f- from, for teaching our children. Um, and now the government says, really, Christians are a big hate group that we need to worry about, uh, that their talk of Christianity is actually hate speech, homophobia, homophobia Islamophobia. And what these people who have become wise in their own eyes don't realize is that really this book, this Bible, is about love. That God so loved the world, He gave His Son, and that His Son so loved the world, He gave His love. That's a religion based on love. And Jesus went on to say the two great commandments, love God, love each other. And after I became a parent... And my mother was about to die, and she said her favorite thing was her kids being there with her and loving each other. It made all the sense in the world. This Bible makes sense from the prophecies Mr. Lamborn spoke of. When you read Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's just verse after verse of prophecy of what was fulfilled by only one person in the history of man, and I yield back.